are going to be making some masks and I have two different methods to show you. The first one is the plaster method. So for this, you're going to need a bin of water, some scissors, some plaster strips. I have some that are already attached to some gauze and then a mask mold. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is cut yourselves a bunch of strips of the plaster. So we're going to move this um, water out of the way because it's really important you are doing all of your cutting away from the water. We don't wanna get the plaster strips wet until we're ready to use them. Um, the reason being plaster um, is a sort of powdery material that just stays kind of stiff and powdery, but once it is dropped into water, it is activated and it becomes very soft and floppy but then quickly will harden up and the hardening will be permanent you can't re-wet it and fix it and so if it gets wet before we're ready that would be really bad it would not um, be good be very wasteful so we're going to be pre-cutting our strips away from our water the strips can be whatever size you want them to be um, if you're trying to do a lot of details you definitely want to go a little bit smaller but we're gonna be just doing a base layer right now. So we're going to be making our strips a little bit bigger. Um, not so big that they cover the whole face, but we want them to be big enough that we can um, get a good amount covered up in our surface area. You might want to consider even taking some and cutting them in half again if you need some smaller, tinier pieces. Just make sure that you're giving yourself um, a nice little pile before you get started. Remember, you can always um, stop in the middle of working and go back over to a separate area where you can do more cutting. You can do that at any point when you start running out, but um, you definitely wanna start yourself up with a decent little pile, at least to get going. So, this is a good pile to get started. Let's talk about the benefits of using plaster. One really positive thing about plaster is it's very strong. Um, once it's hardened and once you have enough layers, it can be a very strong, sturdy mask, so it will hold up to a lot of use and be something that you can um, display without worrying about it crumbling over time too much. Um, so that's a positive. Another thing is that um, once you create shapes, they are pretty strong and they won't fall off very easily. It's very easy to attach things to each other. It's also really easy to use. So let me demonstrate. I'm going to take the water. I'm going to take one of my strips and I'm just going to dip it right in the water. And you can see immediately that it is very floppy and easy to bend and manipulate. And all you're going to do after you dip it in the water is put it directly on top of the mask. And you can see that there's a bunch of little holes in there bunch of little holes from the gauze that's in there. Um, you could leave it like that, but I like to smooth it out. So I'm taking my finger and I'm just kind of uh, moving my finger back and forth on the gauze and it just smooths it out a little bit. So it looks much more smooth and seamless. You don't see all those holes anymore. And that is something that I totally recommend doing so that you don't get those little bits and pieces all over the place. Um, now the positive of doing this of course is it makes it very smooth and nice um, but the other thing is it's never going to get completely smooth you're still always going to see a little bit of the lines of where the plaster were and you are still always going to get a little bit of that sort of bump and rough exterior so if you really want something truly um, very smooth then the other method I'm going to show you would probably be a better choice for you um, Here's the other couple warning signs I want to tell you. Um, you want to make sure that as you're building your mask to leave everything open that you want to leave open. So if I want my eyes to be open, if I want my mouth or some interesting shape to the mask, I need to build that now while everything is wet and soft. Um, it is very challenging to cut plaster after you've already um, let it dry. So you want to make sure that you are being careful to work your way around. Once it's soft, you can sort of push it too. You can push it into the shape you want. Um, you definitely want to make sure that you are leaving everything open that you want to have open now, okay? Um, so if you change your mind later, it's something we really can't fix. Not very easily anyway. If I want this to be a really interesting shape, you can see how soft it is that I can just bend and push it very easily right now into the shape that I want it to be. So if you wanted the eyes to be a different shape in this, 
is really wide open and round, you can do that. But this is the time to do it, is to start building it and shaping it while it's all very wet and malleable, that means bendable. Um, you can fold it back on top of itself, that's totally fine. The first job that you're focusing on right now is trying to get the shape of the mask that you want, making sure that you're creating that as you're going and getting a solid first layer on. You're going to eventually wanna have three full layers on here, at least three layers. You could do four or five even, but I would say three is usually a really sturdy, durable amount. One layer is gonna be very flimsy, it's gonna fall right off. Two is getting there, three is sort of the magic number we're going for. So I'm not worrying about doing all three layers right now. I'm just getting one layer done trying to get the whole thing. Don't forget the sides of the mask here. You don't want to neglect the very sides here. So we're going to make sure we get the sides as well, unless it's something you don't want to have. Um, but I'm going to be building up the sides all the way around the mask, making sure I've got everything. And I'm going to work on this until I get three layers. All right, once you have three layers on your mask, the next thing you have to think about, is there anything additional that you wanna to add to it? Any sort of three-dimensional bits that you wanna to add to it? So you may have three full layers on here. You might have the shapes of the face and the mask that you want. But the next question is to ask yourself, is there anything that's gonna be built off of this? Now on plaster, you can do some three-dimensional things popping off. You just can't do really big things. I'm not gonna be able to build giant horns or big um, snouts to make it look like an animal or anything. I can do smaller things. So for example, I can take my piece of plaster gauze and I can crunch it up and I can push it onto the mask and I can shape it and pinch it into sort of a nice spike or horn shape as you can see. So I can do some three dimensional stuff. I could build up more on there, but honestly I'm not gonna be able to get anything too gigantic on here. Uh, just some smaller shapes that I can build up. But make something that looks like a star or flowers or something and you want to have it um, roll around on the face again you can roll this into the shape that you want and you can have it kind of roll around on the face so you can do some really cool three-dimensional things they're just going to be smaller shorter shallower pieces they're not going to be really tall and huge but um, that's one of the benefits let me show you the second method. Okay, the next um, mask building technique we're gonna learn is using paper mache. So for this, you're gonna need a mask mold. You're gonna need a placemat, of course. Um, newsprint paper, you can actually literally use newspaper for this step or just this newsprint paper which has no printing ink on it but it's just the same quality paper. You want something very thin. And then um, some art paste. I am using Elmer's Art Paste um, for paper mache. I do enjoy it, it's a great one. You can also honestly just use flour and water and thin it out as much as you want or thicken it as much as you want. And flour and water all by itself will work great for paper mache. You can also use flour and water with a little bit of liquid glue. Um, I personally just like flour and water, but this is a great paste as well, so we're gonna use this today. So in preparing for this, you're going to, again, want to make sure your paste is out of your way and get some strips here. Um, it is optional if you want to use scissors for this step or not. I'm actually just going to tear it. You're going to take um, your paper and just tear it into strips. Um, bigger strips are fine. I recommend using some smaller strips, though, so that you have some nice thin strips you can work with. 
it's fine that it's not perfect it's fine that it's a little bit rough when I tear it you just want to have a variety of little pieces that you can work with um, I will say that um, a tip is that the smaller the strip the um, smoother this is going to end up being so I'm just going to tear a bunch of strips then we're going to talk about um, the positives and negatives of using paper mache and what we can do with it okay I got for myself a whole pile of strips and I have my mask mold ready and now I'm ready to start paper mache so some benefits of using paper mache over um, any other method is that paper mache um, is first of all very cheap and easy to do to do it really requires very common household items um, it is a little bit messier so that's kind of like a negative I guess for it um, once you dip a strip into the paste you're gonna find it to be very gunky and slimy whether it's made with flour or this paste so we, this is very important making sure you take your fingers and pinch off the excess pinch it off so it's very um, just lightly coated on both sides and then you're going to take it and literally adhere it directly to the mask and just sort of smooth it out with your fingertips um, you really want to smooth out that paste you do not want big blobs of it it should look definitely shiny you know to the surface because you just adhered a piece of it but it shouldn't be big blobs and globs of paste that's definitely not something you want to do another potential recommendation is to actually put the piece on the paper and then take your fingers with the paste dip it into the um, bucket and sort of wipe it on there and then put it directly on your mask and then do the same on the other side just put a little paste in your hand and wipe it on making sure you're really smoothing it out now this method um, of using very small pieces and smoothing it out you're gonna get a really smooth beautifully slick surface um, much more so than let's say if you use plaster um, because the, you're going to have those big bumpy gauze bits showing through. So if you're looking for a real smooth, perfect surface, this is definitely something you'd want to do. Um, another really big positive is that paper mache is really easy to cut later. So if you have a specific design that you think is just going to be really hard to work out and um, shape as you're building then you can take the easy way out and you can just simply cover the whole mask um, without worrying at all about where things are going to go or if you have to leave eyes open if you have to leave the mouth open if you have to create a certain shape you can just say you know what I'm going to figure that all out later um, I will just cover this whole thing up and then draw on top of the mask when it's dry and I will cut out the specific pieces that I want so those are some really big positives um, a sort of downside of working with paper mache is that you're using paper it's very thin it's very light and in order to make it very strong and sturdy you're gonna need a lot of layers um, three layers is really a minimum for no matter what method you use whether you're using paper mache or plaster um, three layers is a minimum for it but I would say with paper mache honestly I would go with maybe four and even consider doing a little bit more five or six so um, if you're not overly concerned with everything being smooth and perfect then instead of using these tiny skinny layers like I'm using right now which will take a little bit longer to finish up then you can use big pieces that's totally fine just keep in mind that when you use a big piece when you go over a curved edge you're gonna get a lot of wrinkles and bumps so if that doesn't bother you then go right ahead use a nice big piece um, you know on any area you want but just keep in mind that that's going to create some wrinkles and bumps so just decide for yourself what is going to work for you and what you need so I'm just gonna finish doing a bunch more layers and then we'll talk about one other cool benefit of using paper mache one other thing I want to interject right now is if you are someone who especially doesn't care too much if it's very wrinkly or not and you just want to really get extra layers done quickly you can do this little trick you can take um, one strip make sure it's a nice wide one and then you can just get a little paste on it fold it in half put more paste on it and suddenly now I have two layers instead of one so instead of having to do one strip at a time and layer it on I can have two strips at a time and then I can 
um, make sure that I'm wrapping it around the mask. One area to make sure you definitely get, which a lot of people forget, no matter what kind of method you're doing, whether it's paper mache or plaster, definitely make sure you get this whole outer edge. What happens a lot is people keep dumping more and more on top of the mask, and this part becomes very thick and strong, but they forget about this, this whole outer edge, and this becomes extremely weak and floppy if you're not making sure you're maintaining enough layers around it too. So make sure you're giving that area a lot of attention too. Again, no matter what you're doing, whether you're doing plaster, paper mache, doesn't really matter. You wanna make sure you're giving that area a lot of attention as well. I'm not worrying too much about having these edges pop off because again, paper mache is super easy to cut. So I'm just going to cut it off afterwards, trim it so that that stuff isn't there. And I'm just doubling up my layers, maybe even tripling them up just to get this uh, done a little bit quicker. So let me finish this up and then I'll show you that last bit. If you ever have too much paste on your mask like this, how we have a nice big shiny blob here. I don't know if you can see it, but there's like a nice big shiny blob of paste there. Um, instead of dunking your papers constantly into the paste again, you can just use the paste that's on here. Just use that, wipe it on um, so that you are not wasting. You can even take a dry piece, stick it right on top because chances are the underneath part wet and then just put paste on the top of it so there's lots of different ways that you can do this and really minimize how much paste you're using if you find that it's getting real sloppy stop dipping your paper into the paste for a while and just simply put it right on the mask dry and use what's on there to spread it out and as you can see it's working just great for me I'm able to really stick these extra pieces on without having to dump it back into the paste because at some point you probably have enough paste on here as it is you just need to spread it out a little bit better Okay, after you get three layers minimum on, um, you can either continue to build up your layers so that it becomes stronger and thicker and just leave it at that and then do some cutting and designing after it dries. Or let's say you wanna do some bigger, more epic types of designs. Maybe I wanna transform this from looking like a human face, because right now if you look at the profile, it definitely has a human looking face to it. But maybe I wanna add something here to really make it look more like an animal, maybe a lion, a dog, cat something so I really want to transform this nose mouth area into just one sort of massive area maybe I want to add ears or horns or something else here is a great and quick way to do it first make sure you have some generally you're going to want these sets of strips to be a little bit longer and maybe even a little bit thicker so that you can use them as anchors for what we're going to do next next I'm going to take just a big piece of paper and I'm going to crumple it up and I'm going to I might even need more than one and I'm gonna crumple it up until I get about the size, the shape, and the volume of what I want. And I'm gonna put it right on top of the area that I wanna build up. So I'm gonna put this here. I think I'm gonna put even another one. No need to paper mache this part. We're just gonna take this dry piece and put it here because I want it to be very um, fluffy and really puff out this bottom area. Once I have it where I want it, I'm going to get some of these pieces covered in paste and we're going to anchor this piece on. You probably want to have some pre-made so I'm going to make a few and have them hanging off the edge here and I'm doing this so that I have them ready to go so I can hold this with one hand and just lay my strips down with the other hand. So I'm going to put this right where I want it. I'm going to take one of these strips and I'm going to lay it across and try to push and anchor it in place. Don't worry if you have too much, we can always flip it back up on itself or we can cut it off later. Usually one piece is not gonna be enough, so you're gonna to need to make sure you are coming at this from different directions and anchoring it from different ways. So I did one across, I did one up, and I did one down now. Um, that way I'm getting layers coming at it from different angles. Looks like I could still use one under here to anchor it. All right, and now you can see really quickly, I changed the profile of my mask extremely quickly. It took me a matter of minutes to ball up some paper, get some anchor strips down, and just put it in place. 
and now I'm able I'm on my way to making this become an animal or something totally different than a human um, so this that's a really cool benefit of paper mache is that you can do some pretty epic awesome things pretty quickly and without too much effort um, if anything doesn't look quite smooth enough or built up enough you can always add little pieces to where you think you need it um, you can add more anchor strips, some more strips on top to smooth it out because it's pretty smooth over here, but over here it's looking a little rough, so I might add a few more strips to smooth it out. Um, lastly, let's talk about adding like ears or horns or anything. Okay. Just like before, I have some strips that I prepared and I'm getting ready to maybe make some ear shapes. Now, I'm going to take, again, another piece and I'm just going to sort of fold this into the shape that I want. So maybe I want it to be a triangle shape. So I'm going to just fold the paper until I get it to be about the size and the shape that I want. Now, if my intention is to do two ears and I want them to be exactly the same or pretty close, before I stick this on, I'm probably going to build my second one just to make sure that everything is the same size, um, the same thickness, and I don't have to try to match it after it's already been built and attached to my mask. That was going to make it a lot harder. So I can kind of use this as a guide and try to fold my second one to make sure it's about the same size and about the same shape. If it's not exact, it's okay, but I'm just making sure they're about the same size and shape. Now, once I have this, before I attach them, I'm actually going to wrap these up with some strips just as they are. And I'm doing that because I want this whole thing to be um, wet and um, covered so that when it does dry, it will dry stiff just like everything else. I don't want to leave it all in pieces like this. This could easily unfold over time. So this way I'm securing it and I'm also getting everything kind of covered in that paste so that it'll stay um, soft for now, but then it'll also harden later when I need it to. Once both of your parts, your ears, your horns, whatever it is you're adding to the mask are made, we're ready to attach it to the um, mask. So I'm going to figure out where to put it. Now they're, I can lay them down, but they're not going to stick very well just like that. I do need to use some strips to help them out. So I'm going to do this a couple different ways. So first I'm going to lay my first anchor strip down. This might not be the shape I want. I probably do want them to pop up a little bit, but I'm just going to anchor this down to make sure that I have paper mache it down first and then I'm going to get one from behind and wrap it around from behind and I'm going to keep doing that putting some on the back side some on the front side and by doing that um, again I'm getting everything nice and wet and it makes it a little bit easier to bend and move um, but it also is going to help it stick a lot better and stay more permanently so now that it's all wet and I've got it anchored on both sides I can actually start shaping this and bending it so that it has sort of more of a indentation into the ear so you can see what it looks like when I only did one side versus when I did anchors on both sides now it's popping out exactly the way I would want it to and I would just continue working with this until I get it the shape that I want. All right, and what I would continue doing at this point is adding more and more strips, bending, twisting until I get it to be the shape I want, but also making sure it's the smoothness, smoothness that I want. So if it's looking bumpy and rough, that's just an indication I need to put some more um, strips there to try to smooth it out and make it look a little bit neater. So you're going to continue doing this um, and then we're going to let it dry and then we'll talk about how to move on from there.